Creo 4.0, Lesson 3, Part 1. We're going to make a series of small parts so that we get used to repetitiously selecting certain things when we're setting up the components that we want to create. So first one, we're going to just leave the defaults for everything. And make sure you take a look at your working directory. I'm going to go over to where I keep all my parts for the book. You may want to keep it whatever your system manager says or your school. If it's your own computer, you can set it up yourself. Make sure you put everything in one directory. New. Click OK. And we're going to do our typical make sure that our datum tags are on. Go over to our model tree. Turn everything on. As a system manager or in control of your own system, you can have all of these show up when you first start the system, when you first go in and create a part or a assembly or any other object on Creo. So basically, we're going to pre-select the front. And when we do that, this pops up. Of course, we can always go over here to, to give commands, select commands up at the top, extrude. We're going to be looking in this direction. And we're going to leave on 3D. We're going to leave it in 3D. We're not going to bother to go into our 2D like this. Control D, I'll go back. So we're going to be sketching in this first quadrant here. And if we look and see what shape we want, we're just going to do a simple shape here and add a round to it. So I'm going to create a rectangle. If we make it small, then it won't be as large as far as the outside dimensions go. So I'm going to make it fairly small. Click. And right mouse button. And let's say, just pick, I'm going to just pick a number to get it. You can drag it to some number that you wish to have. We can add a taper to it. We can make it symmetrical. We're just going to leave it like it is. And with it selected, I'm going to go over here and pick on this edge here. And I'm going to click on round. Middle mouse button to complete. Go move my cursor, select the top, and then I'm going to select the shell command and middle mouse button. Now I am going to go over and change my color. And the reason I wanted to do that is yesterday when I was recording the previous lesson, uh, I think it was lesson two, part two, I created a particular situation where I had a new command. This is model colors. And I had turned this off. And then later I'm going, why Why is this grayed out? Why is this grayed out? I had forgot that I had put this here. And when you turn it back on, you can see the colors are there. But many times you want the colors to go away because it's easier to view the object without a particular color on it. So that's basically what you were looking at here. So I'm going to close that. That's my first one. These are all little exercises. Start a new one. And in this case here, I'm going to click on the top and sketch on the top datum. And I'm going to select circle. It doesn't make any difference how big I make it. Again, if I make it small, if I make it too big, or not too big, but very large, then it'll fill the screen differently and it'll have a very large dimension here. Now we can go and change that, but I'm going to leave it like it is. So exit. And if we go over to options or here, we can see we can actually add a taper. Now if we add a taper at this point, we cannot add a, another type of feature, for instance, a draft to that. So, and there is a limit to the taper. So here's my taper. And it's going to look like the same thing we're going to do with the draft. But this is all within one command. So one feature holds the angle and the extrusion. Now, I'm going to go and edit that. 
because I want to put a draft on there instead. So I can remove the taper or go up to options and uncheck taper. Now, what I want to do is I want to select any of the vertical faces. And when I do that, certain commands come up. And I do not see a draft. So I'm going to control D to get my standard orientation. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to select draft. And I want to open up the references tab here so that you can see. I'm looking for the surfaces to draft, put an angle on. I'm going to pick this one. And then I want draft hinges. And I can click inside here or I can right mouse button and click here. Either way. And I want this to be the hinge. Now, you can see it's pretty much the same as before. But when I finish this, I now have two separate features that I created. And I'm going to go and select the edge, select chamfer, and make a large chamfer. I'm going to rotate it around. When I move my cursor, it'll highlight that surface. And if I lose my menu, I just hit right mouse button. So my pop-up here, I want to shell this again and then finish it. Standard orientation. I can get it from here also. Now, what I want to do is just double click on it. And you can see it's 215 inches by 300 inches. Quite large. So if I go into operations and I scale the model, and how about 0 0.01? OK. Now when I double click on it, you can see this is, this is much smaller. So for instance, if I wanted to make this 2 inches, I wanted to make this 3 inches, it's much more realistic dimensions at this point. So scaling the model. You don't have to really, I'm going to hit my left mouse button a couple of times to finish this. So you don't really have to model to scale. And later, you can change that and then adjust your dimensions accordingly. The next one is another part. It looks a little bit like the first one, but we'll do something different in it. New. OK. I'm going to click on the front, and we are going to extrude it. And in this case, Again, we're going to use our rectangle, make it a little bit bigger. And I think I'll make this full screen with the menus, not full screen like using this. And right mouse button, I want to see what my commands are. One of them here is an arc. This is a fillet, basically. <clears throat> and I'm going to select a couple of points. So instead of adding a round later, I'm adding a fillet around here, right in the model sketch. Bring this out a little bit. Middle mouse button. Now, what I want to do is I want to click anywhere to deselect, select the curve, and I'm going to put an axis down the middle. And with that axis highlighted, I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to select the front here. Oh, no, can't do it. I'm going to go up and select the hole first. Then I'm going to, if you see here what's happening, I selected the axes and now I want to select the front here. Now, the other selection went away because I didn't hold down the control key. So now the hole's starting here and I want it to go Put my cursor over the top of the drag handle, right mouse button through all. Middle mouse button. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to shell this. And it shells out the to a constant thickness. But it's kind of in the wrong spot. I really don't want this boss sitting here. So I can come and I can take that shell command in the model tree and I can move it before the hole like so. The next one. Next one's a 
rectangular cut we're going to take out of the middle. So sketch on the front datum plane, extrude, right mouse button. I'm going to select line, and I'm just going to sketch an outline. Now you'll notice it'll tell me the constraint when it's parallel, perpendicular, etc. Now, I went back, and you can see I did not make this correctly. If I was a little bit more careful with my, my picks, I would have had a 90-degree angle here already. So I can go up here, and I can see some of the choices I have. One of them would be let's select vertical, the constraint, and pick on this line. Now it's vertical. Check. In this particular case, I am going to go over here just to take a look and see what's here. And then I'm going to go over here on the ribbon and see what's available. And I'm going to use symmetric. Now, I could have put my cursor over the top of the drag handle and got the exact same thing. Middle mouse button finishes the command. I can also hit enter or check. So there's my figure. Now, I want to sketch on this plane right here. So I'm going to select it, and when I do, I get these commands in the pop-up. I'm going to pick on Extrude. <clears throat> and in this particular case, I'm going to go to the Sketch View. So I'm looking down on it. Now, right mouse button, Rectangle, and I'm going to create a rectangle. not getting my rectangle to work. Let's see what's happening here. I'm going to use another figure just to see if I can... Okay. Put a circle. I'm going to undo that. And rectangle. That's funny not getting my rectangle to work. I'm going to try this other rectangle. Still not getting it to work. Well, that's kind of odd. I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. And I'm going to cancel this out. And cancel that command. Control D. And I'm going to try it again. So I'm going to select extrude. I want to sketch on this datum or this plane right here. Right mouse button. I'm going to click on Rectangle, and it works. Not sure why it wasn't working before, but I just came out of the command and completed it. Now, I'm going to select OK, and I'm going to put my cursor over the top here, right mouse button. In the book, it tells you to do something a little different, but here is a new one, Creo 4. I'm going to select two sides through all. And I want to make sure I remove material. And again, I could have selected up here for that. And under Options, I could have gone through all and selected it like it is in the book. And you can see the direction of removal of the material will make a big difference. So my cut goes all the way through on both sides. All right, the next one is a thin-walled part, new, okay, select the front here, extrude, and in this particular case, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to go back over here to extrude and see this is all grayed out. But if I do something a little different, instead of pre-selecting and then later having to go and remove material, if I click on Extrude and say I want to do a thin or remove, I can't do remove, it's not a cut yet, I can thicken the sketch. 
So this is available now rather than having to do it later. Now by doing this, I can have an open section. So I'm going to go and I'm going to select on same datum plane. And in this case, I'm going to go to the 2D sketch view. And I'm going to put in a center line. And right mouse button, line. And I'm going to sketch two lines. I purposely try not to make them equal. I can go over here to select, right mouse button, line command is on. But in this case, I would rather have the fillet, and I'm going to put in an arc here. I'm going to click on select up here. Now, by doing that, I ought to be able to adjust my sizes. Now, I do have a center line. So I want to free up that command. And by hitting the middle mouse button, this becomes selected, the one by one. And I'm going to grab everything and select it. But I want to show you something. If I put a window here and I cross, it's going to pick up some things, but not everything. So if I want this line included, I must select everything. I can select one by one by holding the control key down, or with Creo 4, I can actually come in this direction and anything I cross will be selected. So I cross and I encompassed. So it depends on whether you go like this. See that line was not selected. So crossing and encompassing will both be selected. So I want to do that. And when I do it, mirror up here becomes activated. Otherwise, it was grayed out. Mirror. I'm going to select the center line. And it's going to mirror it over to the other side. Now, if I wanted to change my dimensioning scheme, I can do that here. Let's say I want a dimension for the height. And let's say I want a dimension for the overall, same thing, line to line. Normally, you don't go point to point. Now, if this is too big, I can come up here and I can select and then select the two to three dimensions, right mouse button, and I'm going to go and modify. And lock the scale. And this one here, let's say I make this five. I'm only going to change one. Later, I can come back and clean these up. So this says uh, 1.4. I'm going to go 1.5. And down here, it says 18 point something. I'm just going to click on 18, hit Enter. And that's it. Check. Can't see the part. It's an open section. Check. Failure. Now. What did I do wrong? What I did wrong was I assumed that I had picked thin or thickened section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and edit my sketch, go back into my sketch view, right mouse button, and I'm going to add a line from here to here. Now you can see it's a valid section. Check. Still doesn't like my tool. I'm going to try it again. Control D. I'm not getting a preview. By not getting a preview, I know something is wrong. So I'm going to uncheck this thicken. There's my preview and check. Refit. Now, I'm going to click on right mouse button and edit the definition of this. I'm going to select thicken, and you can see. And then I'm going to edit the internal sketch and click on this line. 
and remove it. And now you can see I have a thin wall. So what I did is I went back and I made it so that my original sketch was closed. Therefore, it gave me a valid preview. Then I went back in and I created a thickened sketch by taking out one of the lines on the bottom. Check. Now, while we're here, let's go up and do a command search and we're going to look for sheet metal. So convert to sheet metal is over there under model, convert to sheet metal. So model, operations, convert to sheet metal. Now, it wants to know what's my driving surface, the primary surface from which to unfold. And I'm just going to select in here. If you know anything about sheet metal, that would be a, a, what you normally would select. So now I get a whole bunch of new commands, which we're really not going to go over. But this is the sheet metal part. And so what we have available is completely different than before. Now, all I want to do is make a flat pattern. And the reason for doing that, I want to make sure this is developable. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I think it is. So I want to be able to develop this in a sheet metal and then bend it. So this says it is valid. And I'm going to delete that one. Okay. Now you can create a sheet metal part from any thin walled, constant walled model, but you cannot make it go back into a solid model. So we're going to finish this one. And we are going to complete this portion. We've made it up through five parts. This ends lesson three, part one.